everybody, it's Master Gallengeist here, bringing you my review for Eternals Issue 9. And overall, I enjoyed this issue, though the art style went kind of weird at a certain point in here. Like, it was kind of a dramatic kind of shift, and we'll get to it when we get to it. But this is still going on that Thanos has decided to go against uh, the Deviant City and is trying to get Fastos to mainly help in his ability to fix his body and get him more integrated with the machine uh, that the Eternals are a part of. And we see them pretty much figuring out how to do their defenses and everything. We see Cersei kind of coordinating and then having Icarus pretty much used as the main kind of arrow against uh, the Watch as it's going on. And we see that the Watch... Uh, doesn't really care that much about what it hits. We see that Kingo has also been tasked with being the last line of defense with Fastos to make sure he stays in play. But we see that they do not really care what they kind of hit, and Thanos is even like, screw it. If Fastos gets killed, he just gets like brought back into the machine. He then gets resurrected, so don't be gentle, just beat it. Let's see. And then, of course, the Deviants had their own kind of, like, anti-Eternals missiles, which is kind of strange because we do have the Eternals kind of, like, uh, our main group of Eternals trying to fight them and help them, and we don't see any kind of, like, misfires or anything. We do see that Sprite is useful with using their illusion, po uh, the illusion powers to kind of, like, fuck around with everything going on. And we see that the machine is kind of, like, talking about everything and saying that, like, it hasn't really gone nutty because Thanos hasn't joined the fray yet. He doesn't... Let's see. He would rather just win than destroy the city. So just he doesn't go out of his way for just, like, wanton destruction. So he goes in to pretty much find, as, like, a surgeon with a scalpel, as it's, like, talked about, to figure out where he needs to cut. And, of course, one of the deviants is like, hey, yeah, the Eternals are lodging over there. And we all know that he then killed the dude afterwards. And this is where it then shifts art style-wise. So, you can kind of see it's the usual kind of art style that we've had in the Eternals up until this point. And then, it shifts to this kind of style. Now, I don't think that this style is kind of bad, but it's kind of an awkward shift that doesn't meld as well with what's going on. And we see that this is mainly just, um... Uh him going after Talo to kind of figure out what's kind of going on. We see him pretty much criticizing his artwork, talking about how nothing's eternal, love's not eternal. Doing his kind of, uh, his saying that he dabbles in criticism, which is kind of an interesting thing since I like review stuff on my channel. I'm like, mm, interesting Thanos there. And we see that he is then using Talo uh, to get Thana into play so that way he can get information from her. Um... Let me see here. Talo is like, hey, it'd be a mercy killing. You don't need to kind of like give any kind of information, but she does give the information anyway. So that way it's best utilized to get Thanos to be going to a place and that they know where he's kind of going. Thanos, of course, just leaves Talo alive because he's being an asshole and says like killing you would be a mercy and I don't want people to think that I'm merciful. And... He's like, the change is going to be happening. Uh, he doesn't want her to kill him and have that on her conscience. But yet she, on the whole thing, is like, you know what? I'm not going to leave you. If somebody's going to kill you, it's going to be somebody that loves you and works that way out. And then we see that she does kill him in the end. Let's see. Then we see that the watch is pretty much taken on to uh, Bastos' place. He's trying to figure out what to kind of do and Bastos doesn't want any more killing, and he just leaves it to Kingo to help figure out what's kind of going on. He's like, okay, the Eternals were made for a reason, the Deviants were made for a reason, you have to figure that kind of stuff out because Thanos is an Eternal, but also a Deviant. Figure out that kind of whole thing, and then you'll be able to kind of figure out kind of how to deal with him. And then we see that he pretty much stands out there Kurok calls to Thanos. Thanos pretty much kills him immediately. He almost is going to utilize the watch to annihilate the Deviant City, but Droog calls him on it and says, hey, listen, the longer you're out there, the longer you could lose one of the watch, and they'll probably capture him instead of kill him. 
So to keep your forces in check, I think it'd be best to draw here. He's like, yep. And uh, Icarus is like, yeah, we've won. Dana's like, yeah, we don't win in this kind of scenario. And then we see like a list of the casualties, which is kind of nutty. They're like, wow, that that really sucks. And then we get back and we are back to our usual kind of art style. So I don't know why it could have been just like trying to figure out um, fill-in artists or whatnot. But I kind of like the usual kind of art style, so it was kind of jarring how it was, because it's different enough to be like, okay, this is kind of weird. And I understand that they're probably thinking, okay, we're shifting to another part of this story. We can have this kind of transition, but it kind of just came out of nowhere for me. And I'm like, mm, okay. And we just see that we're now back to our usual kind of thing. We see that Crow is talking with Cersei, uh, just about everything that's kind of gone on, uh trying to see if he's being jokey or stoic or bitter. He's like, uh, there's a lot of stuff. Can't I be kind of all of it? And then he, of course, apologizes to Thana about what she had to do, and they're trying to figure out a way to kind of, like, stop this. Well, the deviations and all that, and it's like, haven't we tried to find, like, a preventive kind of measure or whatnot? And, just, and Crow's like, yeah, I mean, with deviance, that it's a kind of thing that was, like, closely linked to us. We try and find something on that and then is also like not just the deviations and all that kind of stuff but everything that's going on because you've got the eternals and the deviants fighting all that way but Cersei's like all right yeah but the first things first we got to deal with Thanos so Kingo gives the lowdown of what's going on we have to figure out what the purpose of the deviants are Crow is like yeah we've got our kind of priests and stuff like that and I think they'd just be hesitant to kind of let you guys into their kind of vault and stuff and Cersei's like, yeah, but yours isn't the only priesthood. As they then go to Celestia and get in contact with Ajax and... Let's see. Yeah. And... Uh, Makari. Yeah, Ajax and Makari. And they're like, alright, uh, let's see. So we gotta figure out stuff about it, so where are we gonna find this at? So that, of course, leads them to going to Avengers Mountain to on the depths of a dead celestial to understand what is going on with the Eternals and the Deviants. And that's going to put them into conflict with the Avengers, as we've seen. So that'll be a kind of like interesting kind of thing to kind of happen with and all that. But uh, I've been doing some kind of stuff and figuring out because I'm seeing some other kind of comic books and I will read this up until, uh, read the Eternals up until, uh, like the new Amazing Spider-Man comes out because that one kind of interests me a little bit more than this at this point, just to kind of see how that kind of works out. But that's not going to happen until like April. And I, there's just some that's like, okay, I've, I've read this for a little bit and I still think that this is still a pretty decent kind of comic book, but I'm more interested to see what they're going to be doing with Peter Parker in April with the Amazing Spider-Man and seeing all that stuff going on there. So, that's just kind of a heads up to how much longer I'm going to be doing uh, reviews on the Eternals comic book. And I still think if you're interested in the Eternals and what's going on with the Deviants and the Eternals, to still kind of check this out. But I just want to kind of give a heads up with that. So those are my opinions on the issue. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me. Also, like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.